good evening good evening all and a very very warm welcome uh to you all what is the muscle Health foundation charity's 14th episode um in series two of our in conversation with broadcasts hosted by myself michael mcgrath we're back we've had a bit of a break and i hope that everyone's summer is going is going well it's great to see a bit of uh, blue sky and sunshine out there this evening. Um, I wanted to kick things off with a quick refresher, as our audience will by now know only too well. These chats are informal, they're conversational in style, always with uh, interesting guests and personalities, chats that we hope entertain, inform, and who knows, lift spirits a little bit. And of course, if this is the very first time that you've tuned in, a very, very warm welcome uh, to you all. So, in making sure that these broadcasts speak to our community, children and young people across the UK, between the ages of 8 and 28 who have the muscle wasting condition, muscular dystrophy, plus, of course, their families. So, to all the mums and dads, uncles and aunties, PAs and carers, our charity friends, supporters and partners, as you might expect, there's a briefing process that sits behind every invited guest, making sure they feel comfortable, but also we want these conversations to uh, remain relevant. And that's the key. They need to remain relevant and they need to remain uh, interesting. Okay. And that's the plan. That's what we aim uh, to do as we go through the rest of the evening. In encouraging that shared spirit, that sense of belonging, that, help, that helps all of us, yes, to feel engaged and connected, right? So just before we welcome tonight's guest. A few quick housekeeping points. Firstly, a safeguarding note. As always, we have eyes over tonight's broadcast that's streaming live as we speak on the charity's Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn channels this evening. So if any inappropriate comments or unacceptable behaviors are observed, action will be taken. Secondly, as many of you now know, all the In Conversation with Broadcasts are indeed recorded, meaning that all 28 episodes, yes, 28 episodes, that's 15 in Series 1 and so far 14 in Series 2 since we began the show in May last year, are available at your convenience for your, for your viewing pleasure. The question is, should we commission a Series 3 from March 2022 onwards? Ping a comment. Leave a little message. Let us know what, what you think. And as always, you can help grow our reach by subscribing, commenting, and sharing. And if you've enjoyed the show, previous shows, or if you've enjoyed tonight's show, please do leave a little review. That would be that would be nice. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for lifestyle Cornish disability blogger, presenter, and cheeky chap. Let's hear it. By the way, those are his words. Let's hear it for Ross Lannan, a muscle-tastic and very warm welcome to tonight's show. Ross, how's it going? Hello, thank you for having me. What a welcome that was. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great to have you with us this evening. How's, how's it all going? Where, where are you actually in the UK, Ross? I am, um, I was gonna I was gonna say my kitchen then. I was, I was ready to go, I'm in my kitchen. Um, I'm in Truro, which is basically the city centre of Cornwall, so. Yeah, proper proper Cornish boy. Proper Cornish boy, excellent. Speaking of kitchens, I've got to ask you the question. Is it a Howden's kitchen or is it an Ikea kitchen? Come on, spill the beans. Oh, it is definitely a Howden's kitchen. Is it? Okay, it good. <laughs> I had very little to do with the actual um, interior because I, so, I was so against moving out. This is my first sort of independent home and I'm sure we'll get on to chats yeah. about that. But yeah, it's definitely Howden's. Very good, very good. So listen, how's life been for for you last year, you know, lockdowns and are you still shielding? Are you still being cautious? Where are you at? Yeah, so whenever I'm sort of asked that question, I'm, I, I still, to an extent, I class myself as, as shielding, even though I'm, I am venturing out a little bit. So I'm, I'm very cautious. Um, you know, nine times out of 10, I will choose to stay at home and go out, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm very much, I'm, I've become a home bug, which is, is kind of scary because I was such a social butterfly before all of this. Um, 
but yeah, other than going out to the odd um, work event or something like that, I will, um, I'll be keeping myself safe, safe at home. But that's, you know, it's fine with me as long as I can still see family and friends and be social at home. As much as I miss the pub, you know, I, I can live without that, you know. Just about. <laughs> Just about, yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because I think, you know, a lot of our, our beneficiaries through the work of the charity and families, uh, I know, are being cautious. So, you know, I, I think what you're saying resonates with many of them. So let, let's, let's just turn the clock back a little, okay? So mm-hmm. tell us a little bit more about... SMA, spinal muscular atrophy, and for those that perhaps don't know what it is and and how it impacts your life, Ross. Yeah, so SMA, spinal muscular atrophy, is essentially, it it kind of comes under the umbrella of muscular dystrophy. It's a neuromuscular condition that basically causes muscle weakness, and it's sort of progressive over time. And yeah, basically, I just get to sit down 24-7, I'm a full-time wheelchair user, um, and and yeah, other than that, you know, it of course it affects everyday life. You know, I I do live independently, but I do need support with um, everyday lifestyle tasks. So I do um, I do have a small care team, and I and I live just down the road from my family as well. So I've got the perfect little setup. I'm very lucky in that sense. Um, but yeah, SMA obviously. I'm not really sure what else to say about it other than, you know, it causes muscle weakness, but I don't let that, you know, be the focus. I still, you know, I, I still drive a car. I still want to yeah. work and yeah. socialize and, and do all these cool things. So yeah, we're going to come on to the cool things yeah. a little bit later on in the convo. And it's interesting when you say, you know, you're sitting down 24 um, seven as I am actually. So, um, you know, walking's overrated, isn't it, Ross? So, um, uh, got time yeah, before- <laughs> Before we, before we get going, okay, we've got a little treat for all of our viewers this evening. Um, so we've got a, a short film um, giving some additional insights into Ross's life. Enjoy. great every time i see that film that's the second or third time i've seen that film the whole maltesers down the uh, down the down the pipe off the roof gets me you know, every single time <laughs> so okay so lifestyle and the lovely film by the way and i you know please any comments any any thoughts any observations just put them on and so we can share them that'd be lovely but lifestyle and disability blogger okay so 10 or 15 years ago this term blogger was was um, was what it was. It wasn't talked about a great deal, but everyone's blogging now, aren't they? And um, so, tell us more about a life on wheels. Yeah. So, firstly, I I mean, even up, me just watching that video, I feel I feel really proud, and it's like it's like watching the best bits of your life, seeing it all there in one little sort of package like that. It's it's so nice. But yeah, so a life on wheels kind of started. Uh, it's good sort of four years ago now. And I'm still sort of here ticking away at it, 
trying to sort of grow this audience and gradually you know it, it has grew and it's been it's been a real amazing experience like I, I've got no regrets and I kind of when I decide I want to do something I really do put everything into it I'm I'm a bit of a perfectionist so it's probably one of my biggest downfalls as well because I overanalyze and I overthink everything um so when I decided I want to start a blog I really you know planned behind the scenes and, and wanted to create a backlog of posts so that I wasn't just like a one-hit wonder type thing um but yeah it just really started um as a way for me to document my lifestyle as a young adult with a physical disability really um you know a lot of the the stuff you see online these days surrounding disability is is negative so I thought I want to create a platform where I can share fun and interesting stories or reviews or anything that involves just getting out and having fun and showing what we can do rather than what we can't. And I guess that's where the blog really started. Um, I used to watch a lot of like YouTubers and like people on video. And I thought, oh, I'd love to have a go at that. I'd love to film my life and then watch it back in a few years and, and, and go down that route. But I never really had the confidence to be on camera or, you know, make these videos so I thought you know what if I start with a blog just written I, I, I should be all right and then as the blog has gone on I've sort of ventured into more things and, gr and grown with confidence as well really and then here we are <laughs> <laughs> very good I'm going to jump into the chat room for a second because the messages are coming in um and hi Kerry Lovely to see you this evening. Thank you for tuning in. It says, um, our Ross rolled into one video. Um, I don't know if you know Carrie, but anyway, she says hello, um, which is wonderful. So we're gonna, we're going to, um, we've got another question just coming. Just how many Maltesers can you actually fit in your mouth at once, Ross Lannan? I mean, how long is a piece of string, right? Is it? <laughs> that, that particular um, video was, I was filming a, a fundraiser for, um, spinal muscular atrophy UK and it was it was a, called a 2.6 challenge so I, I had full creative control what could I do that involved the numbers 2.6 so I, I had a, a drain pipe that was measured to 2.6 meters and I had my dad stood on our garage roof that was <laughs> that was a good two meters high as well and just thought let's see if I can get 26 Maltesers um, <laughs> They Love, it. Down. <laughs> Love it. You and I are going to talk about the 657 challenge a little later on. So listen, and if people want to learn more, they can head to www.alifeonwheels.co.uk. All right. So before we chat some more, um, Ross, you'll hopefully be familiar because I did mention this to you a little earlier with our quick fire rounds. OK, this is a, a way of allowing our audience to kind of get to know our guests a little bit more. Right. Um, so. Are you ready for this? Oh, bring it on, hit me. I think I know the answer to the first one. Maltesers, love them or loathe them? <laughs> love. <laughs> good, good, good. Roast pork, roast beef, roast lamb, or roast chicken? Oh, roast beef. Yeah, I've never had lamb in my life. I don't know if that's a statement okay. or not, but. Okay, all right. So um, most used emoji on your smartphone? Oh. Probably the laughing face, the crying laughing. With the, with the, with the tears coming down, right? Yeah, that's a bit weird. <laughs> Poached, boiled or scrambled eggs, Ross? Oh, I don't actually like eggs. This okay. is really, uh, I'm going to chuck it out there. I'm just going to say scrambled. Let's go scrambled. All right. So listen, the Paralympics are about to kick off, right? So if you were a Paralympian performing on the world stage, what would your sport be, do you think? Oh, that's hard. I used to play boccia, but I was no way Paralympic level. But let's let's go with boccia, why not? Okay, all right, nice. Now, music and tunes. So what tune puts you in a fabulous mood? Oh, just you know one. What? Just one. Oh, that's so hard. It's got to be... My music is so depressing, you know? It really is. <laughs> My playlist is full of like breakup songs and acoustic 
Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. We can, we, if nothing comes to mind, we'll come back to it at any point in the next 45 minutes or so. If, if you can think of the tune that actually puts you in a fabulous mood, we want to hear it, right? So one item that you'd perhaps take to a, a desert island, Ross. An item. Um, one thing. One thing. Let's say, ah, oh, I hate being uh, this generation, but it'll have to be my phone. Your phone. I with, 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 how's that going to charge a solar panel on the phone? How's that? Is that the thing? Um, yeah, we're gonna have, we're gonna have backup batteries attached to it. There's a way. Okay. <laughs> right. Very good. Now, are you going to hate me for this next question? But I'm going to ask it anyway. Mashed potato with or without gravy? Oh, I'd rather be sick. I absolutely hate mashed potato, <laughs> but I love gravy. So let's just say gravy. <laughs> so what's the story with, um, you know, with with potatoes and you, just out of interest? Yeah, so I am a massive potato head, like beyond. I will have potato with any meal to the point where I've now got my dad. I probably should admit to this, really. But I send, I send him to work with a plastic, an empty plastic tub. And when he goes to his can canteen at work, if there's ever potato on the menu, I'm like, can you bring me home some roasties? Yeah. Um, I just love potato in every form apart from mash. There's something about mash that just gives me the creeps. Doesn't do it for you. That's all right. So, Ross, if you could speak one language fluently, what would it be? Oh, I would love to be able to speak proper Cornish, but I've never... As a Cornishman, I'm ashamed to say that I, I don't know any of the Cornish language. So I'd love to learn. Okay, well, we, we, we can maybe we can come back and talk about the Cornish language. I'd love to learn a little bit more. So listen, in terms of music, because I know that you love your music, um, music that, quote unquote, makes you feel good, okay? Mm -hmm. I hear there's a, a contemporary hit radio, a CHR, I think it's called Station, playing the hottest music, okay, from some of today's biggest artists broadcasting 24 hours a day, seven days a week, called, get this, Chaos Radio. Now there's there's a station name, right? So come on, tell us more. What, what are you up to at Chaos Radio? I mean, chaos by name, chaos by nature. Um, <laughs> I um, Yeah, I was literally, probably about, gosh, I'm not sure how many months ago now, but I was invited to um, come along and volunteer at the radio station. I think the main lady, a lady called Babs, who is one of the main the main people there, she, she followed my blog and she reached out to me and said, how would you feel about coming along and co-presenting um, with one of our other presenters? And I thought, do you know what? I'm gonna bite your hand off at that. I'm all over that. So, yeah, I just said yes. And I feel like after the whole shielding situation, I thought this is the time that I need to start saying yes to more opportunities. And it's a great way just to start venturing out into the big bad world again. So yeah, ever since, you know, we're, they can't get rid of me now. I'm, I'm there, I sort of <laughs> co-host every Thursday. And I just okay. love it. I really, really love it. We sort of, we interview different guests, you know, what's sometimes really important, serious subjects. Um, a lot of talk about food waste and mental health and, and, and really important subjects. And then other times we have the most wacky guests that I, I just equally love it. And it just, yeah, it's pure chaos, but <laughs> I, I feel like I fit right in. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. And, and uh, so we're going to do a shout out here for chaos radio and for, for Babs and, and so Chaos Radio, based in Truro, Cornwall, is that right? That's right, yeah. All right, so so here's the shout-out for Chaos Radio. And if anyone's interested in learning more about Chaos Radio, go to thisischaos.co.uk and tune in on a Thursday night. Is that right, Ross? Is that your slot? It's a daytime, so we're on from 10 till 3. Yeah. You're on till 10, 10 till 3. Fantastic. Yeah. Love it. So, listen, from radio to journalism let's talk a little bit about your about your studies at the i believe the academy for disabled journalists is that right that's right yeah so i feel like i've got my finger in way too many pies at the minute i, I need to find my lane it's either but i just i just love media in general 
and I, I feel like I'm testing the water with a lot of things at the minute, whether it's the radio, the blog, the, the journalism. I just want to do a bit of everything. Um, and I think, you know, why not? So, yeah, I signed up to the Academy for Disabled Journalists and I never in a million years thought I would ever go back to being a student because, I mean, it was the worst time of my life years ago and I thought why am I putting myself through it again but I'm absolutely loving it um it's an online course so we have weekly live lessons and then the rest of it is sort of distance learning where we're sort of teaching ourselves and studying online and doing different assessments and yeah I'm really really enjoying it and I'm excited to see where it goes fantastic so you're doing is it the certificate in foundation journalism yes that's right and, and we need to give a shout out, don't we, to Ability Today um, and, and also the National Council for the Training of Journalists, the NCTJ. Um, Ability Today obviously have created and founded this Academy for Disabled Journalists. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. And sort of the, the group of us that are doing it, I'm not sure. There's probably about roughly about 20, 20 students in the group and every different Every person in the group brings a different aspect, which mm. which is amazing. You've, everyone has a disability, but we all we all want the same goal. We all want we all have a passion for media and journalism, but it just takes us down different routes. So mm. some people are in the in the group have visual impairments. Other people are just purely physical disability, like myself. Um, all sorts of disabilities, and I'm learning so much as we go along already about what I should do to help me become more accessible and help, you know, to be able to help other people as well. So I'm loving it. Yeah. Excellent. Fantastic. What, what aspects of, of journalism do you, do you love? What, what, what are the bits that really float your boat, so to speak? Yeah. So I think the thing that surprised me the most was I really like news journalism. So one of my assessments recently was to write real life news stories. So I had to go out and find an, find a story, basically, that hadn't already been reported on. And so I'm sort of scrolling through the internet and, and, and looking at different things, thinking, where can I find a story from? And I've really enjoyed the whole layout and learning how you should write and base a, a new story. So sadly, my friend's dog went missing um, a couple of weeks ago, and they 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 put out this public appeal on Facebook and, and everything. And luckily it was a happy, happy ending. The dog was found that later that evening, but straight away I was like, boom, that's a story. Like, it's, so I messaged my friend, can I write about your dog? And they're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Good for you. Good for you. I'm just going to jump into the chat room. We've got some more messages coming through. So good evening to Rob, Rob Dunga. And he said, I've only just discovered MHF and Ross Lannan. We'd love to include you on the show. Felix Stowe radio. Uh, we call it discoverability. So thank you very much, Rob. Um, get in touch afterwards and let's see where we go. Um, a message uh, from Kerry. Kerry said, what's been your worst moment of being a radio DJ oh, on, on yeah. Chaos Radio? Um, worst moment, I would say, was we once, I mean, it, it's funny. I'm, I'm going to say it's the worst because it was quite awkward, but we interviewed this this gentleman who... We have this segment on the show called a mystery guest. So obviously the powers that be have booked this guest, but as the presenters, we don't know anything about them. So we have to ask yes or no questions to try and guess who they are and what their job is. And we had this guy on the show and he was just giving us nothing. Like it was literally just like, I was running out of questions to ask. I didn't, he, he just giving me nothing to work with. It was, it was really hard. Um, and in the end, it turns out he was a ghost hunter. <laughs> and he was, the, he was just this strange man, but it was brilliant in the end. But that was probably like a real, that was testing me because I was thinking, he's given me nothing. Where do I go from here? <laughs> well, hopefully we're giving you some material this evening to chat about. How are we doing so far? 
Oh, you're doing a great job. <laughs> good. Excellent, excellent. Listen, um, and a big good evening to our, our first guest, actually, on the uh, LinkedIn live feed, David, David Strudley. Good evening, David. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. Um, any questions, please do drop them in on the LinkedIn uh, comment. Uh, that would be fantastic. So just a summary of the Certificate and Foundation of Journalism. And for those that would like to learn more about Ability Today, they're a fantastic organization. Check out abilitytoday.com. So I know that we've brief, pre, um, you know, previously we've touched, haven't we, Ross, a little bit on, on the media in terms of disability representation. So, um, you know, you and I both know that media generally uh, depicts people with disabilities according to sort of common stereotypes, right? Such as, you know, for example, pity or heroism. And of course, now the conversation has changed and we're talking more about the super crip model. I don't know if you've come across that term in which people with disabilities are portrayed as heroic, as overcoming their, their challenges and their adversities. And it's all, it's all too often used, isn't it? In the media when reporting on people with disabilities so you know what more do you think uh, ross needs to be done yeah I, I completely agree the whole sort of it's inspiration porn i, I think they call it as well where yeah. and i've had it myself I've, I've uploaded something onto my my blog or on social media and people have commented like oh you're so inspirational i'm just like I've only gone to the shop to get something. Like I'm hardly, you know, yes. breaking barriers. But I mean, there's a time and a place. I totally get, and and I'm not. I nothing annoys me more than when there's a lot of disabled people in the community who they advertise themselves as advocates and things like this. But all they do is is post negative things, and, and I hate that. And I'll probably offend people when I say this, but yeah. The, there's certain sides of the community which I really don't like. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, I focus a lot on the positive. Like I want, don't get me wrong, nothing is, everything is not rainbows and sunshine all the time. You know, disability, everyone copes differently. But for me, that positive mental attitude is what works for me. And that's what gets me through the day to day sort of struggles. So, yeah, the, the media representation is something I'm very, very passionate about. And I think the only way we are going to fix it is purely getting more people out there doing these public events, whether it's on the TV, whether it's in magazines, radio, wherever we look, we just need to see people to prove that we're still out there. We're just, I hate the word normal, but we are. We're just normal people, regular people going about our lives, you know. We're not we're not Paralympians, not all of us. You know, and of course the media, be it screen or or otherwise, has the power, doesn't it, as you as you well know, to shape an audience's knowledge and understanding about topics such as, I don't know, gender, ethnicity, age, um, identity, um, social issues, and of course, um, disability. So, you know, we've got the Paralympics coming up. It's it's interesting in terms of how the conversation has evolved. Um, over the last, you know, I can remember the last, I don't know, four or five um, Paralympics. What, what's your perspective? You're going to be tuning in, watching, watching these extraordinary athletes, these talented, gifted athletes uh, on the telly. Yeah, I mean, full full credit to them. Take you know, take nothing away. I'm not a massive sport fan, so okay. I, I will probably tune in and see the odd the odd thing, but I'm not sort of religiously sat watching it. I've had people. Because a lot of my friends, I have friends with disabilities as well. Yeah. And God, if the group of us are out and about in public together, people think, you know, what's going on? I'll never forget I went on holiday once. And I was, um, it was only a, a sort of staycation. I think we were at Butlins, if I remember rightly. It's nothing to really brag about. Um, but, yeah, there was a group of us in wheelchairs. And as we were going down the main uh, walkway, I just remember someone shouting at us like, oh, something about the Paralympics, you're on your way to the Paralympics. And I just thought, really? <laughs> you know? I know, it's, it's, it's a, it's, um, you know, let, let's, 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 I mean, you know what, from my perspective, it would be a wonderful thing, wouldn't it, Ross, if conversations like these actually didn't need to happen. Instead, we're saying things like, do you know, disability is so incredibly well, well represented in the media, isn't it? So, you know, hats off to all those broadcasters, those production companies, they're doing a really great job. They really get it now. And 
that would be a good conversation to have, right? I mean, one day it's going to happen. It's going to happen for sure. And credit where credit due, it is a lot better than it used to be. Like you do switch the TV on now and you do get the token person in the wheelchair, which is nice, but we still need, you know, we need a lot more. And I feel like, you know, I volunteer, I will put myself out there and that's what I'm striving for. So yeah, good stuff. No, no, great stuff. Just going to jump in the chat room because um, David's made a really good observation about the need to focus on, on the positive, right? On, on quote unquote normal people getting on with life and yeah. you know achieving the things that they do in their worlds and the, one of the points you made a little bit earlier is that you know we cope everyone copes in different ways whether they have quite frankly whether they have a disability or not and you know we've all I think we've all been put to the test over the last I don't know 14 15 months with this COVID and this wretched pandemic and we've had to find new ways to adapt and I I don't know what what do you think in terms of people's ability to adapt whether they have a disability or not quite frankly yeah i think the pandemic has proven to a lot of people that you know there was once you're told you can't do something or you can't go somewhere the whole world has gone into panic and i'm just like well hang on a minute like there's so many disabled people out there that this is just normal life like this yep. is every day you know we can't always get into that restaurant or we can't always access that place you know sometimes we you know daily struggle you, you don't feel like you can leave the house so mm. that's just an everyday routine for some disabled people and it's interesting how it's taken like a global <laughs> pandemic to make people realize that there are people um, who do who have been in lockdown for a, a lot longer um but again without being too negative I, i've seen a lot of positives come out of this pandemic yeah so for me like I mean, my my uh, my conversation always goes towards food because I'm I'm such a foodie. We're but, coming onto that. Don't worry, we're coming onto food. <laughs> but like in terms of like the pandemic, like access wise, so many more restaurants and places are now mm. doing takeaways and delivery services that weren't doing it before, which ultimately is more accessible for people with disabilities. You know, table service in bars that's better for us. Companies are allowing you to work from home more instead of going into an office. Like there's so many more positives now than there was last year that I really hope some of these changes stick around. You know what? I think that people with disabilities are better equipped at dealing with the sort of situations that we've had to deal with, right? I just think they are better yeah. equipped because they know how to adapt. And, uh, you know, I can only speak for myself in terms of my own ability to have had to adapt and change and do things perhaps in a slightly different way. But listen, perfect segue, let's chat about your goals for the future, right? So um, let's talk about your dream job and what does that look like? Because I think we've sort of touched on that a little bit, but I'd like to just go a little deeper there with you. Dream job, yeah. So I would say probably I'd really like to carry on the presenting side of it. So I feel like I've had a taste of it with the radio because at chaos it's sort of split into two sides we've got the radio side and the the, t the tv side which is, is it's all broadcast online and i absolutely love that presenting um aspect of it um probably because i'm a bit of a control freak i like the power of having the questions and and asking <laughs> asking other people you know getting to know them whereas it is even tonight i'm like oh my god I, i'm on the other side of the microphone for a change and it feels weird but yeah, I'd love to venture more into the presenting and, and the mainstream media stuff. So ultimate dream is to present like a mainstream TV show. I'm going to throw it out there, maybe a show like this morning. Like that's a dream for me. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's just visualize that for a second. So you're, are you, you're hosting this morning. Is that right? I am. I'm the next, you know, Phil and Holly. <laughs> Next, Phil and Holly. I wonder if Phil and Holly are tuning in this evening, if they're with us this evening, right? And maybe well, not we'll, Phil and Holly. Maybe I'm we'll, probably more, <laughs> more of an Alison Hammond, I reckon. What would you be saying to Holly Willoughby and Phil Schofield, right? If they were tuning <laughs> yeah. in this evening, what's the message? You have a think about that one. But anyway, this is a bit of a gear change. I'm going to share a series of um, images, photographs. And Ross, um, what we'd really love you to do is just tell us a little bit more about them as they as they come up right so oh. 
here we go. Here's here's the first image. <laughs> Tell us a bit about Ralph. Oh, that's my boy. That is that is. <laughs> so this is Ralph. He is my he's my child basically. I'm a proud dog dad, and he he's a four year old cockapoo. I don't know if you can actually see him. I won't move my camera because I'll probably mess everything up. But he's he's sleeping down on the floor beside me. Um, but yeah, this picture was taken of us on the beach. I, obviously, um, I I just I love the beach. I, per, this is Perimpoff Beach, which is my local, and it's just like my ultimate happy place. Um, I'm in a, a beach buggy wheelchair there, and Ralph loves it. You give him his ball on the beach, and he's just in his element. So uh, I, lo I love the I love the um, the beach buggy. You know, I'm, I'm hearing more about Ralph, and I'm loving what I'm hearing about Ralph. But let's just let's just go there for a second in terms of beach accessibility right because i know that for a lot of a lot of people with disabilities predominantly those that are mobility impaired right um what, what any observations that you'd like to make about beaches and accessibility i mean i know that some are much better than others but i think there's there's work to be done in this space right oh yeah absolutely i mean beaches and wheelchairs do not mix i'm just like an, a, a sinking nightmare waiting to happen um, but accessibility has improved so much, especially like you see pictures now of beaches with um, hard surfaces where you can drive your wheelchair straight yep. up onto the sand. Um, they've sort of got laid out different sort of access points throughout the beach. And a lot of places have got these buggies now, which are fantastic. Um, I've, I've tried several different types of buggies and I just love it. It gives you that real sense of, it's just freedom, like just to be able to either dip your toes in the water or feel the sand, little things like that that probably most people take for granted. But for me, like it's just it just brings so much, so much happiness. Just in terms of taking things for granted, just jump into the chat room for a second. David's put a question around, you know, asking about has the pandemic led to reduce support for you and your chums and colleagues? And what's your view on that? Um, to be honest, touch wood, I've been very lucky throughout the pandemic that it hasn't yeah. it hasn't affected my my team of carers so i'm touching wood that we've all kept safe and um, i've been very fortunate to have a great team of carers and family that are nearby to support so That's good. I, know, I know it's not the case for everybody but yeah. Yeah, I've been very lucky in that sense. Yeah, it's good to hear. Rob is, um, I'm not quite sure how to interpret this particular message, but Rob's saying, if Ross is Phil, I think Rob is saying he'll be Holly. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it oh, on. Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's move on to the next image. Um, and I've got a few questions I wanted to ask you about this particular image as it comes up. So here we are. Where are we, firstly? Okay, this is another beach. There's a bit of a theme here. Um, you can tell I'm a Cornish boy. Um, this is Quadrivi Beach, which is another um, lovely location. I'm up on the cliff tops on this one. Basically, I'm just asking for a hug in this one. I think. <laughs> very good. Very good. Very good. And, and is this an all terrain chair that you've got? Not really. Yeah. No, this is my everyday wheelchair, which yeah. I think. Bless it. I've put it, I've put it through some things, but it served me well. So yeah, it's pretty good on grass and things like that. Yeah. Um, I will never, sorry. What type, what type of chair is it? Is that of interest? It's, it's just a basic spectra. It's nothing, yeah. it's nothing fancy. I've just tilted it back in this picture. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my wheels are, are essentially my, my life, my legs and it gets me from A to B and yeah, for sure to the beaches sure. so instead of instead of a to b we're going to go go to the music scene again so next um next image which we're going to pop up has a bit of a vibe attached to it where, where where are you here who are you with what's going on yeah so this i, I love this picture because it makes me look like a bit of a hippie which i really am not um but this is at v festival which was a good few years ago now and i've got such amazing memories from v festival i think i went two years in a row because I just loved it so much. Don't get me wrong, I didn't go camping. I'm the biggest snob <laughs> going. Like, <laughs> you will not get me in a tent under any circumstances. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we booked in at the local hotel. Um, but yeah, this picture is me and my sister. We were 
we were just chilling in between in between bands. I think it's an advert for the Kaiser Chiefs in the background there. Um, I think that was the year that Justin Bieber was there, which I'm embarrassed yeah. to say. Um, but hey, we move. <laughs> is your um, is your sister tuning in this evening? Um, I I think she's working tonight, so I don't think she is. Well, yeah. this, the, the show is being recorded, so she can watch it a bit later. But what's your sister's name? So my sister's called Rose. So okay. and yeah, she's a she's a nurse, so she'll be on, probably on the night shift tonight, I think. But yeah, we're really close. We've got a lovely relationship. There's only a couple of years between us, and yeah, we we get on really really well. Nice. Let's do a shout out to uh, to Rose and thank her for all all the amazing work that she's doing with all her colleagues there. Um, so we're going to move on to um, another image and something that uh, I'd like to chat to you about, which is a little bit more about your your driving skills. So how long have you been driving for, firstly? So I it'll be my 10-year anniversary next year. Wow, okay. So, Good. Yeah, I've got a bit of driving experience I'm under the belt now. Um, but I, I love my car. It is literally my pride and joy. Like, okay. I love it. And I drive with... As you can see there, my, those are my special hand controls. Yes. Um, the space drive controls. And I just love it. It gives me that freedom just to get out and go wherever I like. I, I often just jump in the car now, drive somewhere, like usually to the beach, park up on the cliff top, read a good book, or I take my laptop and do some work there. And uh, yeah, I just, I just love it so much. And I had quite an eventful uh, experience when I was learning to drive. And I'm so glad I stuck with it because I think anybody else it probably would have put them off. But yeah, I think it was two weeks before my driving test. I had everything booked. I was ready to go. And yeah, two weeks before my test, we had an accident. Um, and before everyone starts blaming me, it actually wasn't my fault. Um, yeah, sadly, there was a, mal a malfunction with the controls. And yeah, cut a long story short, we ended up swerving and, and the car was a write-off basically and i was i was absolutely gutted because that was the only accessible vehicle in my my local area for me to be able to learn in and drive so yeah that was very stressful and upsetting to think two weeks before my test i had to cancel yeah. because like, there was no vehicle yeah. Yeah. so then i had to go through the process of applying for my own motability vehicle and starting again basically which took another year or so but here we are, and we're, we, we're still going. I've got the same van nearly 10 years later. Fantastic. I love it. What is it? What, 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 what is the make? It's a VW Caravelle. Yep. Okay. So it's, my, my friends call it the aeroplane because it's essentially <laughs> it makes all these hissing noises and so many high tech adaptions. Yeah. They always do. Oh, you know, Motability are, are a fantastic organization, and it's interesting to have watched over many years, because I've been a Motability customer for many years, um, how technology has moved on, you know, in terms yeah. of you talk about the spacer and you, there's all sorts of different gizmos and little little techie things that just can enable somebody to retain their independence. So, you know, great stuff. No points on your license, I hope, Ross. No, we are, we are fully clean, and just to brag, when I passed my test, I had zero minors, which I rubbed in my sister's face for, <laughs> well, I took advantage of that, yeah. <laughs> very good, very good. So we're just going to pick the pace up a bit. I've just realized that we've been into this conversation about 45 minutes, and we've got another 15 minutes or so to go, and we've got a lot to get through. So back to um, the chat room. Naomi, hi, Naomi. Great to hear from you. Naomi's one of our past Muscle Dream beneficiaries. I, I think Naomi's down in your neck of the woods. I, I think what I'm thinking Cornwall, Devon. Naomi, tell me where are just where are you? But she said Ralph is absolutely adorable. I think we can all agree with that. Yes. Um, Karen, good evening, Karen. Great to great to have you tuned in. A quick answer on this one, please, Ross. What do you think of Portreath Beach? Oh, lovely. Yeah. Lovely. There you any go. Beach, any beach, come on. <laughs> <laughs> And Rob's tuned in again. He said, one of my radio listeners calls her wheelchair her freedom machine. Do you have a name for your chariot? I love that. I actually don't. I, re I need to think of one. Yeah, I've never named it. But it's, he's a he. I know he's a he. He's a so he, okay. We'll have, to, we'll have to come up one. If you've got okay. one, 
Comment for me. <laughs> Comment for you. Yeah, Naomi's saying, have you named your wheelchair? Well, again, you know, obviously there's a bit of a theme beginning to develop here. And Jordan, hi, Jordan. Good evening to you. Thank you so much for cheering in. I hit the central reservation the month before my test. I cannot blame my controls, unfortunately. <laughs> That's honesty for you right there. Real-time honesty. And Naomi said, yes, hi from Dorset. Um, that's wonderful. Great stuff. So um, now the next next image, I, I'm going to ask you, where, you know, where is your happy place, um, Ross? In fact, it's not an other image, but we're just going to go there in terms of your happy place, because I think I know the answer to this one, but you go for it. Yeah, it's got to be, it's got to be the beach. It's got to be driving to the beach. And often I just don't even get out of the car. I just love to sit, <laughs> just sit in the car. Like, I get cold a lot, like you can't really see under the camera now, but I've got two hot water bottles, but one on my lap and one on my yeah. feet. Yeah. And the car, sitting in my car is like a little greenhouse sometimes. So yeah, happy place is the beach, hands not, down. Not the hot tub. Oh, that's a good one actually. I okay. have to know that you have a Rolls Royce hot tub and that you're happiest when you're at home in the hot tub, music blaring, the sun oh. shining, and maybe Ralph running around. I mean, that's equally a, a good time. <laughs> so, yeah, anything that involves water. I am a liability in water. I cannot be trusted alone, but I just love it. Gosh, you know, you're you're just thinking about all those magnificent beaches which are within, you know, a stone's throw for you. And I feel very, very envious, um, you know, sitting here talking to you from my home office in Hertfordshire. Um, but uh, there we go, moving on. So um, in terms of one or two life lessons, Ross, so, you know, if you, if you were to give advice to your younger self, maybe if there was a one or two little life lessons that you would give your younger self, any thoughts that you wanted to share on that? Yeah, so I think a big life lesson for me and probably something that I've maybe matured a lot in recently is, is confidence. Like growing up, I was such an anxious kid. Like I literally worried about everything to every little detail. And don't get me wrong, I'm still a bit of a mess, <laughs> but I'm a lot better than I was. And yeah, it's just having that belief in yourself and, and to grow with confidence. Like I had this conversation with somebody the other day, funny enough, and, um, I was heading into a shop the other day and as I entered the shop, there was this little kid with their, with their mum sat outside the shop crying and he was in a wheelchair. And as I just passed them, I overheard the conversation that he was crying because people were staring at him, mm. obviously in his wheelchair. And as I passed, it really like, it played on my mind for, for most of that day really. And I, I kicked myself because I wish I'd stopped and spoken to them and said, you know, that it will be okay because I've been that kid and I'm the one who used to get upset when people stare. And now it's just like, I'll stare back at, or I'll, I'll give them the eye like, oh, have I got something on my face? Like, whereas we, we've all been there and it, it's down to confidence. And I wish I stopped and spoke to that kid because he was so upset and his mum was trying to advise him, you know, just ignore them or just do this, do that. And it's just like, it's something we all go through as wheelchair users. People naturally are going to stare and it's not nice it's really not and i'm still you know I'm, I'm a lot better than i used to be but i'm still you know i still don't like it now but yeah that would be my life lesson is is confidence and just to believe in yourself a little bit more well uh, you know you're doing superbly this evening and really enjoying the conversation so let's let's chat about movies Movies. Um, come on then, let's let's talk briefly about movies. Let's talk about some of your favourite movies. Favorite. Movies that lift your lift your spirit. Come on then. Okay, I would say top two movies. I am a massive Christmas nerd. <laughs> like if I could watch Christmas films all year round, well, I mean I do, but I, I would. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, The Grinch. <laughs> like it's it's a hard choice between like The Grinch, Elf, or just like the Santa Claus movies. I I love. I'm a massive kid at heart, so I've got to throw Toy Story in there. Like, Toy Story is my... You'd never believe I'm 28, but Toy Story is my all-time favourite film. Um, in my... I wish I had a picture to show you, but 
even in my hallway in my house, I've got a shelf full of the Toy Story Love every, it. every teddy. Love <laughs> it. Fantastic. And please, please, please tell me that you also include in your Christmas movies a bit of Tom Hanks and the Polar Express. Do you know what? I've never watched it. Uh, put it down on your on your watch list, okay? Uh, it's a wonderful, okay. wonderful movie. A wonderful movie. Different kind of vibe than The Grinch and Toy Story, but wonderful movie. I was wondering um, if you were going to say um, The Die Hard, because that's, a, that's, yep. a, that's well, a debate, isn't it, of whether it's classed as a... It, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Who doesn't watch a bit of Die Hard? That's a good thing right there. So Richard, just in the chat room, Richard um, Richard Jones. Hi, good evening. She said, hey, Ross. That's oh, the message. Richard. That's the message right there. And um, David said, clearly you're a definite water baby. <laughs> I am. I really am. And I cannot be trusted in water, but I just love it. I really do. I've had so many near-death <laughs> near drowning experiences. It's, it's not good, but I still keep going back. <laughs> good stuff. So, Ross, it's that time again for our second um, quick fire round as the clock is ticking along. So you're ready? Yes, let's do it. Are you sitting comfortably? I had to say that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm so comfy. You have no idea. Good. So, Ross, do you have one hidden talent? Oh, hidden talent. Um, yeah. I feel like I used to be able to fit a lot of cheesy balls in my mouth. You know, the little cheesy ball crisps. <laughs> like I used to count. I, I cannot remember the number, but it was literally shoving them all in. So, yeah. Cheesy balls. Cheesy <laughs> balls. Okay. Fun. If anyone's just tuned in, that sounds really wrong. <laughs> um, okay. The last text message that you sent. Oh. Um, it's probably to my mum. Probably I'm a bit of a mummy's boy, so probably checking that she's all right or something. Have you got your iPhone there? Have you got your smartphone there? I do. Should I have a proper look? Yeah. yeah let's let's go there. Let's do a Michael McIntyre moment. Come on. <laughs> let's have a look. Where is my message? <laughs> yeah, it's from my mum saying she's on her way home. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I, I hope your mum's tuning in at some point, perhaps. Hopefully, hopefully. Okay, there's a shout out to your mum. What's your mum's name? Jan. <laughs> Jan. Shout out to Jan. He's doing extremely well. Listen, best piece of advice that you've ever been given, Ross. Oh. Um, best piece of advice I've ever been given. Um, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> don't talk to strangers. Good, good advice. Good advice. So this this one is on on Cornish pasty fillings. All right. So stay with me. The question is, what's your fave? And I was doing some research earlier in terms of Cornish pasty fillings and the most popular fillings on the planet in Cornwall. Right? Are they? Is it beef filling with lightly seasoned chunks of potato, onion, and swede? Uh, is it cheese and onion? Is it lamb and mint? Is it lentil and veg? Or get this, is it a Cornish pasty full English breakfast? <laughs> oh, stop talking dirty to me. This is like, um, <laughs> um, it's, it's got to be the classic, the steak and potato, beef. It's, it has to be. Has to be. Good stuff. Who so has Ross lentil in a pasty? <laughs> Place you'd like to visit most? Oh, um, oh God, going anywhere outside of my house would just be lovely right now. Um, I'd love to go somewhere hot, somewhere abroad. I, I, I need some sunshine. So I'm going to say somewhere Spanish. Somewhere Spanish is lovely. I mean, you, yeah. you and me both, and I'm sure many, many other people would like to see a bit more sunshine because we're not done with the summer yet. All right. No. Ever the optimist, I think we're due a long Indian summer. So, Electric, plastic, or bamboo toothbrush, Ross? Oh, ele I'm electric. All right. And first career as a kid that you dreamed of having? I always wanted to be a school secretary, which is really random. Very but random. Now, but now I hate kids. So, <laughs> yeah. So, very, very good answer. Good answer. Um, so, with everything the world has had to endure and it's continuing to go through at the moment with, for example, the pandemic and so on, you know, I, I know that many of us recognize now, you know, perhaps more than ever, we all need something to 
you know, to lift our spirits, right? Mm. Um, so Ross, if you could invite two, um, I, I, two celebrities, I use that word guardedly, but you know what I mean, two celebrities to, to your home in, in Truro for some chilled cocktails, perhaps kicking back in your hot tub yeah. um, to help lift, lift spirits. All right, so who would they be and why? Yeah. Okay, so the first one is really, really easy. It would be Adele. Wow, really? Hands down, Adele is like, I'm, I'm, I mean, me and my best friend, yeah. it's always number one on our bucket list to yeah. go and see Adele live. Yes. And once we ticked that off, it was just, it was the most incredible night. And I just imagine that she would be a great dinner guest. Like her personality and bits that you see of her on TV and online, she just seems so much fun. Yeah, so fantastic. Like Adele would be an amazing guest. We got a message from Adele there in the chat room. She says, hi, Ross, you're doing a great job. Love you. There you go. Perfect. Wow, how wonderful is that? Don't tease me like that. <laughs> and, your, and, your, and your other person? Oh, the second one is really, really hard because I don't know. Like, I love a lot of, like, I don't know whether a comedian or whether, like, I love a lot of my TV presenters. So... Yeah, probably someone like, I love Emma Willis. She's always been a, a TV presenter that I've always looked up to. So I bet she would be good fun. Excellent. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, very, very good. We're going to jump back into the chat room. David, thank you so much. He says, David says, Ross, you're showing, you're showing such great confidence and you are an inspiration to us all. Thanks, David. Thank that you. That means a lot. And um, and Joe from the Cambridge Red Disease Network. Hi, Joe. Good evening. Thanks for tuning in. She said, "What a combo! Great to see you both." And then a whole bunch of emojis. And one of the emojis I think is cheese. One is basketball. <laughs> one is football. So, I, 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 you know, not quite sure where we're going with that. But Joe, maybe you want to enlighten us as we as we go on. So, speaking of having spirits lifted, okay. So, Ross, who makes you laugh? Oh, who makes me laugh? I mean, I, I feel like I'm quite an easy person to make laugh. Like, yeah, I, I try and find the funny side in everything. So who makes me laugh? I've got a great group of friends. I really yeah. am lucky in the sense that friends, family. Yeah, I, I'm really lucky with the friends I've got. I've got a real mixture of boys, girls, a brilliant sort of network around me. So it's nice. It's nice. Yeah, we're always laughing. I know that you um, are just a guest in your house, actually, and that your dog, Ralphie, or Ralph, um, your three-year-old cockapoo, yes. is the one that stirs your laughter emotion the most, I gather. Well, he, yeah, he's up there, to be fair. He, <laughs> he, some of the things he does, he's, a, he's such a little character. So when it's just me and him, it's like, yeah, it's like you said, I am just the guest in my own house. He rules yeah. the roost. He really does. Wonderful. So listen, in terms of ruling the roost, we're going to slight gear change. I want you to tell us a little bit about, you know, one or two goals or or um, aspirations, Ross, that, that you want to really, really achieve um, in your life. Yeah, so I think one of my goals is definitely to um, carry on the, the platform that I'm doing. I really want to grow this platform into something and I love the media stuff. So for me to be in a position to grow this platform and be a role model of sorts is just an absolute dream to me. I love it when I get messages from people from my blog and things saying, you know, oh, this inspired me or I showed this to my younger younger child and showed them what you, you did and that inspired them. So, yeah, I'd love to – a definite goal is – is to carry on what I'm already doing for sure, but just take it to that next level. Um, and you I will. just really, yeah, I just really want to be, I know it sounds a little bit morbid, but I just really want to have a legacy. Mm -hmm. I really feel like I want to, not that I'm planning on like popping my blogs anytime soon, but I really want to be remembered for something. And I don't know what that is yet, but I, I just want to have a really positive legacy. That's an interesting conversation, isn't it? Because it's not a conversation that one has often um, around, you know, building a legacy or wanting to have a legacy and wanting to be remembered. Um, and it's a great conversation, I think, to have. Um, yeah. And you will find that. I'm absolutely no doubt at all. 
that you will find that um, that legacy moment or whatever it is um, as your as your you know as your career as your presenting career as your media interest grows and uh, you complete your journalism studies and so on you know I've no doubt that you will discover that but be interesting to know what you know what others think if there are any comments or observations that any others that have tuned in this evening have to say about this desire to wanting to be remembered um, hopefully in a positive good way right <laughs> yeah definitely positive and good way like I don't know what it is I feel like because I'm even though I'm 28 I still see myself as such a I'm such a kid at heart I really am I'm the biggest kid going I will grow up eventually but I think for me like I I've lost quite a few close friends over the years through various um other disabilities and conditions and it really does make you stop and think about life and it makes you see things in a, in a different life so for me yeah it's all about living life in a positive way and just experiencing everything I think that's why like I said I just want to do everything now and take every opportunity to say yes to more things and yeah it, I don't know what this the legacy is but I just I want to do it all. <laughs> Brilliant! I love it. I want to do it all. I mean, that's a great way to uh, to not end the show because I've got one final question. But I want to jump back into the chat room for a minute because Kerry's just posted a beautiful message saying Ross is an incredible human and friend, um, and I'm so excited to watch you continue to achieve your dreams. Thanks, Kerry. That's Thank wonderful. You, Kerry. That's really Kerry is an amazing blogger. She really is. Well, hopefully she'll blog a little bit about this evening. That would be nice. And then she can maybe, I don't know, add some some content around this idea of being remembered. And, and there's a conversation to develop right there, isn't there, about, yeah. you know, legacy building. So final question to close off the evening show, Ross. So you've been a really, really great guest, a really great sport. One thing I'd like to ask, one, one thing to consider in terms of what we can all do to perhaps make, you know, the world a better place. What are your thoughts? Oh, that's a that's a lot on on one person's shoulders, isn't it? I think the important thing is we we all have to play a part, especially now that the world is going back to some form of normality. Is the fact that we don't leave anyone behind. So during the pandemic, I think a lot of us started to become better and nicer people. We we were being nicer to each other, and I'm sad that. I just don't want us to slip back into those old habits. So, yeah, that's that's what I would say. Let's just we're all humans. We're all going through our own battles, and we just need to support each other. And that's it, really. Great words, great words. A little bit more kindness, a bit more compassion, right? Absolutely. So, huge thanks, Ross Lennon, for being our guest this evening. So, from me to you, and to all of our all of our um, audience this evening who've tuned in, a big muscle warrior salute, Ross. If I can invite you to give your best muscle warrior salute. And wonderful. And for those that don't know, a muscle warrior salute is a visible symbol of hope, courage, strength, joy, and unity for all those with muscular dystrophy. And as always, if you've enjoyed tonight's episode, you know what you need to do. Please, 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 can we invite you all to make a little donation so the Muscle Hub foundation charity can continue with its muscle dream program activities that would be wonderful and ross as is the custom um, i've got to ask you if you know someone uh, i don't know whether it's a person of influence or otherwise whom you think might be a great guest for a future in conversation with episode have a think and um and let us know right amazing we'll be back on wednesday the 8th of September. There's the diary date alert. We go live at 7.30 p.m. And I'm afraid, ladies and gentlemen, that I cannot, I cannot announce just yet who our next guest is. Suffice to say, uh, watch this space. Once again, big thanks to tonight's guest, Ross Lannan, down in Cornwall, surrounded by beautiful beaches. And to our volunteer StreamYard studio team for making it all happen behind the scenes. For now, have a great rest of the week. Bye-bye.